resume water vapor thermal therapy, is indicated for men 50 years and older with a prostate volume of 30 to 80 grams. However, compared with a formal clinical trial, clinicians possess flexibility in patient selection, including patients with an obstructing median lobe and or enlarged central zone. In general, any patient who is a candidate for a minimally invasive surgical therapy is a candidate for resumed treatment. If more information is needed regarding patient suitability, functional urodynamic studies are recommended. Additional considerations include patients on anticoagulation or antiplatelet medications and those at risk regarding general anesthesia. Pretreatment planning is important to help determine an optimal treatment plan for individual prostate anatomy. Flexible cystoscopy and truss may be used to assess prostate length and volume, prostatic urethral angle, presence of median lobe or elevated central zone, intravesical protrusion, and patient pain tolerance and propensity for bleeding. Setting expectations is an important part of any treatment option. Identify what is important to the patient regarding treatment goals and expectations. Considerations include sexual function, anticoagulants, symptom relief timeline, catheter, durability, and pain and anxiety management. Resume is an office or ambulatory outpatient-based treatment. For the procedure room, a table to support the patient in lithotomy position is recommended. Resume system components include a portable generator and a delivery device kit. Additional accessories to support the procedure may include the following. Management of pain and anxiety is based on discussions with the patient and pretreatment, such as their tolerance of flexible cystoscopy. The physician's current in-office mix includes a 70% modified prostate block, 20% oral medications, and 10% IV sedation. The physician uses modified periprostatic block, which includes delivering lidocaine between the prostate and the bladder. One should be able to visualize clouds above a white mountain on ultrasound as nerves of the inferior hypogastric nerve plexus are treated. Such an approach results in a very comfortable experience for the patient. The objective of the resume procedure is to create a thermal lesion the length of the prostatic urethra along each lateral lobe. This is accomplished by creating contiguous overlapping lesions between the bladder neck and proximal to the virum montanum. Treatments are targeted at the bulk of the adenoma and follow the natural slope of the urethra. The following is an example of a resume procedure in a 51 gram prostate. After priming, the delivery device is placed into the urethra and advanced to the bladder. Once the bladder is entered, it is recommended to measure from the bladder neck to the viru to determine the length of the prostatic urethra. One field of view represents 0.5 centimeters and each treatment should begin one centimeter from the bladder neck, moving toward the viru in one centimeter increments. Once measurement of the prostatic urethra is complete, return to the bladder neck and begin treatment on one side of the prostate. It is Dr. Cantrill's practice to start on the left side of the prostate, but either side is acceptable. Once beginning treatment, continue ipsilaterally to the viru, targeting the bulk of the adenoma. It is recommended to allow the needle to remain deployed for one to two seconds after completion of the nine second treatment to ensure all phase change of water vapor is completed. If a vapor leak is detected, noted by rapid release of bubbles, moving the delivery device gently in the direction of the leak will help to seal the leak and continue with the therapy. With large vapor leaks, greater than three seconds of the therapy, it is recommended to retreat the area with an additional treatment. Taller prostatic urethra may require stacked therapy to create a continuous channel or a Z-like pattern may be used to follow the natural course of the urethra with an elevated central zone. When intraprostatic protrusion is noted of the lateral lobes, it is recommended to treat measuring from the tip of the intravesical protrusion, not the bladder neck, to ensure full treatment of the obstructing tissue. After completion of the lateral lobe treatments, the central zone or median lobe tissue may be treated. It is recommended to treat central elevation when there is difficulty entering the bladder or the prostatic urethral angle exceeds 40 degrees. 
This is done by moving the delivery device to the right or left of the field and entering the tissue at a 45 degree angle, aiming for the middle of the prostatic tissue. The central zone typically only requires one treatment. When a median lobe is present, the same procedure is done, but should be completed on either side of the median lobe. The procedure time for treating this 51 gram prostate was just over 4 minutes. Once therapy is completed, placement of a Foley catheter to allow bladder decompression is recommended. Dr. Cantrell utilizes a 16 French council tip Foley, which has a more rigid structure to easily pass into the bladder. In his practice, Foley decompression is recommended for 3 days. Treating patients in catheter-dependent urinary retention is feasible and successful with careful patient selection. Considerations include baseline testing, such as urodynamic studies to check detrusor function. Flexible cystoscopy and ultrasound are also helpful. In case of prolonged catheter management, approximately one month is required for symptom improvement. Testing should be repeated every one to two weeks if the first voiding trial fails. In clinical practice, some patients have undergone prior BPH procedures. Given the prostate continues to grow, prostate tissue should respond well to a resumed procedure if anatomic and functional studies support additional treatment to alleviate obstruction. Considerations following specific treatments are displayed on screen. To optimize treatment experience, Awareness of several important factors should be considered. First, any median lobe can be treated. Second, if the urethral angle is greater than 35 degrees, treatment of the central zone should be considered. With an enlarged central zone, either a Z-type pattern or stacked lines are recommended to treat the patient. Setting reasonable post-procedural expectations is important. Post-procedural course may include two to three weeks of urgency, frequency, and or dysuria. Throughout this time, patients should start to experience symptomatic improvement. Typical follow-up after the procedure includes avoiding trial at three to seven days depending on the length of time the catheter was placed. Duration of catheter placement is determined by the volume of tissue ablated and the patient's ability to empty their bladder prior to treatment. Return visits at one and three months are recommended to ensure continued improvement in symptoms. Most patients are on alpha blockers at the time of treatment and are instructed to wean the medication three to four weeks after the procedure when symptoms have improved from baseline. Resume thermal therapy provides the urologist with an efficient, rapid treatment as an office or ambulatory outpatient procedure with minimal transient perioperative side effects. It provides effective and durable alleviation of symptoms with important outcomes including improvement of IPSS and QMAX. It has a favorable safety profile, including preservation of erectile function. Resume has a minimal learning curve and is amenable to targeted ablation of all zones of the prostate. The water vapor thermal therapy warrants consideration as a procedure for LUTs relief, both as an initial therapy versus medications and as an alternative to transurethral surgery for selected patients.